So NBC hired Ronda Romney McDaniel oh. uh, last week to be a, a paid contributor on their network to the tune of three hundred mi- or rather three hundred thousand dollars a year, causing immediate fallout at the network, resulting in outrage by both the public as well as the network host themselves. And that was eventually resulted in her being pulled from MSNBC and ultimately being removed from NB- uh, NBC altogether. Yeah, that was, man, they were on fire. Joy Reid, fucking Maddow. Oh. No, I was trying to wave to Carol. Oh, I thought you, oh. Uh, you can hang out there. with us too. No we're, more, there. we're more fun than your phone. <laughs> <laughs> don't you aren't you interested in shitting me aren't you interested in shitting on ronna mcdaniel by any chance really. that's three hundred thousand would have bought a lot of flowers she's probably disappointed because she I lost mean, her flower yeah, budget well, yeah <laughs> I, I mean it's just insane like for those of you that aren't aware uh, obviously ronna mcdaniel was the the rnc chairwoman for the past few years here and she's actually largely responsible or at least while on her watch republicans lost the presidential election uh, they lost the senate uh, they underperformed in the house in 2022 and they are set to have well they currently entered uh the month with with fewer dollars on hand at the rnc the Nikki Haley. Oh, yes. And she still keeps racking up votes. Haley. And not even on the ballot. That shit is funny. No, but uh, I think most <laughs> importantly, it, and it's not just that she's like a liar and a con and a fraud. Uh, and this is not Nikki Haley they were referring to, uh, although I guess like that's an accurate description of her as well. But, True. But Ronna Romney McDaniel here. It's, it's not that she's just a terrible person and a piece of shit and a liar, and a fraud, and a sellout. She's willing to sell out her family name, all because Trump doesn't like her uncle. Like, most importantly, she's a fucking insurrectionist. Like, she's a, practically a co-conspirator in the fake elector plot that end up, ended up leading to a coup, uh, you know, where our capital was under attack. Like, she's a conspirator in that. And the fact that MSNBC decided that they wanted to invest a significant proportion of, of well, a significant amount of funds in like putting money in her pocket to be a fucking clown show on their network. And, and, and not even just that, like how fucking embarrassing is it for that network to treat their audience like shit by putting this and, person on and their, and their anchors and the people that come on as commentators, like Kurt Bardella, someone had made that point was, I think I was listening to, I think it was the bulwark today with uh, Tim Miller, but you know, and they were saying that the left wing people of color that go on there and commentate, commentate, they don't get anything. Oh, they never get paid. They don't get paid. At they never all. get paid commentary you know, deals. Th- they're they're being made to feel like you know they should just be fucking grateful to Massa for having them on, you know, or whatever. And they're gonna platform this woman. And it wasn't just that. But what the head of NBC was like on her memo in her memo was saying that, oh, this is such an important voice and this. And I'm like, what the voice of fucking sedition? Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> you know, and then she's like, oh, you know, being from Michigan, she's going to be so great to commentate um, um, in this uh, key battleground state. And I'm like. Those words, those sentences, that says everything about their fucking intent. Yeah. Because, like, you don't have anybody else from Michigan. Like, there ain't no motherfucking other Republican. She could I mean, potentially be indicted in Michigan for all we fucking know. And you're going to put her on right? the fucking air and rest your credibility like this. And it's just dis- I, it's, it's disrespectful, like you said, to the host. It's disrespectful to the audience. It's disrespectful to everyone, like you said, who contributes there, unpaid, gives their time uh-huh. and efforts. It's disrespectful to the journalists that they let go, like uh, their print journalists that they fired a few weeks ago who were unionized and it's probably an illegal fire. Like that money could have went to them and that they did this. Yeah. It's just absurd. And, and there's just like... And it's not just that it's not even just that she's a liar because a lot of people lie and then still get the opportunity to come on MSNBC. It's that like 
you know, she's been engaged in in issuing all or just like saying all kinds of horrendous things about MSNBC employees. Yeah, exactly. And not but not only just that she was actively engaged in fucking insurrection. Like actively engage an active and it's crazy participant. Ty. It's crazy. Imagine a world where we go back to World War II and then like the United States decides that they're gonna let Goebbels host fireside chess. It's fucking insane. Right. Like it's it's fucking it's fucking ridiculous, and and I'm very very glad because at first I was wondering when when I had made uh, my post, um, and then somebody had mentioned it was like okay we'll know what's going on come Monday when Maddo gets on and she killed it, so I was like very very happy uh, happy about that and even like fucking you know Chuck Todd I do think that he gave Kristen Welker where he was like. Oh, you were put in an impossible position. Maybe she was, but she could have met that moment and she could have pushed back more than she did. And she didn't. So I'm not giving yeah, her not that Not only did crazy. she pull a Chris, a Chuck Todd and let Welker basically get on TV and lie for 30 minutes. Like she should have just never had her on the show. But I mean, we all she know, should've... we know who or Christian she should have Welker... said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not no. going to do it. Well, that's obviously, you know? but she didn't. But like, obviously again, we know who Kristen Welker is voting for in November. You know, and, 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 and I, Joe it's Biden. not about exactly, exactly, because we can say whatever he, we want and he can say whatever he wants. Oh, you've been put in a horrible position with Rana, whatever. But he has neglected to mention all the motherfucker ass interviews that she's given where she has allowed people to fucking spread lies, propaganda, gaslight and bullshit without pushing back and even like fucking pandering to them. So Her- don't. Her introduction to MSNBC audience was having Trump on there in a pre-recorded exactly. hour-long rehabilitation propaganda tour. Yep. Yeah, it's insane. Like, I don't know what they were thinking. And this is not to say, like, if you're listening to this, like, we're not suggesting uh, that MSNBC needs to become Fox News of the left where it exists solely as a propaganda outlet for the left. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is like, if you intend to present yourself as this liberal leaning outlet with, with journalistic integrity, the last thing you can do is put an insurrectionist on your payroll. Yeah. But now not can't even trust liberal you. leaning, not even liberal leaning. I mean, while they do have, you know, as far as their nighttime anchors go. Oh, we ain't got to talk about it. They got a whole bunch of former fucking Republicans hosting these shows. Exactly. Nicole Wallace for one, you know, and her history, like going, you know. Who y'all, who y'all think Joe and Mika voted for in 2008? (laughs) I bet it wasn't a black dude. No, that's true. That is true. Carol, you look so defeated. Are you okay? You dope. I'm really tired. tired. You're tired. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we, donut. Yeah, I'm sorry. We keeping you up all night. We we wearing We're you sorry. out. Um, we'll tr- we'll try and let you get some rest here soon. Uh, luckily for us, Carol, uh, Ty hasn't consumed copious amounts of alcohol, so she's um, <laughs> yeah, she's she's all over it today. Fan, um, fantastic performance by you this evening, Ty. Uh, so and, and we're just like endlessly. Discuss it with MSNBC, but we, we got to move on in the interest of time here. Yes. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to MSC, MSNBC, NBC on another episode. I've got, I've got more concerns about that, but again, in the interest of time. Um, so Brazil's federal police launched an investigation into former president Jair Bolsonaro after a two night sleepover at the Hungarian embassy. <laughs> and, 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 what the and, fuck? I did not hear about this. Oh, and, damn. Yeah. And what appeared to be an attempt to potentially use uh, Hungary to avoid an arrest. Um, I worded it that way because it's funny. What's he being arrested for now? <laughs> well, you know, uh, so the United States wasn't the only country to uh have an election denier be well that as well but be subjected to a staged coup by a sitting president yes Uh, brazil had a similar incident uh with Jair jair bolsonaro uh who famously had his son in the united states at the capitol or at least in dc 
it, uh, the day of and the day before January 6th is a guest of Trump's White House. So you can connect the dots there. Uh, so there was also a potential, well, a, a failed coup stage by Bolsonaro supporters in Brazil. They've gone to far more efforts to hold him responsible than we've managed to do so here. Uh, of, of course, Trump is now currently indicted. But yes, it appears as though uh, Bolsonaro was trying to pull an Assange and hide out uh. at, the, at the embassy here, hoping to avoid arrest. So now he's being investigated for that and could potentially face more charges. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but... I'm I'm starting to like the way uh, Brazil's law enforcement works. Like they're doing a better job of holding their insurrectionists accountable than we are. Oh, fairly. they arrested them motherfuckers immediately. Oh, like no. <laughs> <laughs> immediately t- on the spot. They was like, "Y'all motherfuckers ain't leaving." Yeah, no, on site, <laughs> on site for real. They were not having it. No. They were not having it. So yeah, they they nip that shit in the bud real quick but yeah real it's just quick. it's incredible i mean it's not it's funny but not funny the dude is like trying to figure out how he's going to escape these criminal charges and what he came up with is i'm a hot out in the embassy is <laughs> 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 uh, hilarious you know and they eventually ended up confiscating his uh, well, so the I think the judge in his case ordered the confiscation of his passport to prevent him from leaving the company, the company, uh, the country. And that's how he made it the decision that he was going to try and hide out in the embassy. But apparently that arrangement didn't work out. And um, he ended up having to, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if he was forced out of the embassy or he left of his own volition. Who the fuck knows exactly what's going on down there. But I just wanted to point out that like. We should be in a situation where Trump is trying to hide from law enforcement and he's trying to find an embassy to escape to. Like, why are they doing a better job of trying to hold this motherfucker accountable than we are? It's it's absolutely insane. Just uh, every day makes me lose my mind. Man, this, just how my brain is broken. And then it breaks some more when I think that it's broken to the point of no more breaking. It's just, it's, it's just insanity on a level that I never could have ever imagined. And it's just, I I just feel like I'm being punked on a daily basis and I'm waiting for Ashton Kutcher to like fucking jump out of a van and tell me that, you know, the shit was just a whole big fucking gag, but yeah, it's not happening. Um, also, and this is semi breaking news as of today, there's like massive demonstrations in Budapest that is in Hungary demanding the, the resignation or removal of Victor Orban from, oh, nice. from, from office. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not violent. It's a nonviolent protest. It's not, they're not like storming the presidential palace or, or anything like that, but the, they are absolutely not happy about that. And, and the fact that it's like such a gigantic protest, uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to go well for, for Orban. And I think, uh, well, my commentary on the Twitter about this subject was, was Tucker Carlson. Uh, hey Tucker Carlson, your boyfriend in trouble, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know. Like I was reading that. Um, I was like, why does he stand so much for Orban? His dad worked for him. Yeah, runs in the family. Yeah. Uh, Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. It's been I was a, like, okay. You know, a long, long relationship between the 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 Carlson family and and the Orban family. Uh, but anyway, so moving on. And the subject, I'm sure all of you uh, listening couldn't wait for us to get to uh, the one of the most important develops developments um, in 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 the the news landscape here. So it appears as though uh, Diddy, also known as Puff oh, Daddy, oh, had, his, had his uh his his uh, New York and Florida homes raided by the FBI or, or DHS department of Homeland security in what appears to be a sex trafficking, 
sex trafficking investigation. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> We're not talking about that on this podcast. <laughs> that is that it's is not the topics this, list. That's not the subject matter that <laughs> we cover was, here. Neither was Orban, so. Uh, no, but I mean, it was kind of funny. So I don't know how many of you keep up with like, uh, you know, pop culture, uh, the music landscape and whatnot, but there has been like this, this ongoing saga with, uh, Diddy sexual proclivities and allegations of like sex trafficking and like sex cult level shit, like R Kelly type stuff. And uh, apparently a number of people testified in, in a, uh, in some kind of civil suit and the feds had an ongoing yeah, investigation. They don't do a raid on a suspicion. <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty it. sure uh, that at this point, like and, and, and the raid resulted in the, uh, the arrest of Diddy's sons. It appears as though Diddy had some kind of, some kind of uh, a fair warning in advance of, of this activity. And he, uh, didn't feel like telling his sons. Well, yeah, not only that, but he boarded a flight and left. That's the a Trump. That's a Trump move. Oh, yeah. he's in uh, Cape Verde. That's <laughs> off the coast of Africa. Yeah, it's a nice little island. Oh, did boy. he bring Ivanka? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's funny. Uh, yeah, so Diddy left, the, <laughs> Diddy left the country as his kids were getting rounded up and, and sent off to jail. I thought that was pretty fucking funny. Um, oh, but was... yeah, just like it was fucking hilarious. I think I said that. Um, yeah, now that the feds have raided his house, he needs to hurry up and file to run for president. Yeah, yeah, that's what you got to do it. Yeah, that's no the only labels. Way. I hear they're looking. They're looking for a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way he gonna try. He can get out of jail apparently because if you're running for president, like the rule of law does it no longer applies to you. But no, moving on. Um, so a federal judge dismissed. Elon Musk lawsuit against the Center for Countering Digital Hate, saying that the organization's reporting on the platform and its activities is, in fact, protected by free speech. Free speech warrior Elon Musk out here using his massive funds and, and to use the courts and abuse them in an attempt to silence the free speech of others. Pretty fucking ironic, huh? Indeed. That, yeah, I, I love this for him. Yeah, I love this for him. Same makes him look like a, a, a huge pussy, uh, a and, pussy ass bitch. And we already knew he was a yes. He, we already knew he was a hypocrite. And like I don't mean pussy. Uh, you know, I, some I do hate to use that word because like it is indicative of well, the t- typically the people who use it are engaged in some form of of misogyny. And while I really readily admit that is the fact, personally, I love pussy. So in in general, I guess you can consider me calling someone a pussy a compliment. So maybe I'll just remove that uh, that epithet from my uh, my uh, vocabulary. Uh, anyway, so this this particular uh, lawsuit was about the the CD uh, rather the CCDH and their report on how. Since Elon taking over the platform, uh, a number of uh, prominent ads from prominent companies were appearing next to the content of Nazi and pro Hitler content. Yeah. Yeah. And he was he was outraged about the reporting of that and filed a lawsuit uh, uh, about the report that they put out that contained a lot of. And and look, the thing was pretty fucking straightforward. Right. And he was saying, like, they use. Uh, they manipulated the platform to achieve those results. And I think a number of us on the Twitter, we were basically like, we would search for Nazi and they would click on a post and then you scroll down a little bit and then boom, there's a fucking ad. And then you just take a screenshot and then you could post the thing yourself. Like it was pretty fucking easy to, to find. Right. And this idea that like people were manipulating the platform to achieve those By results. Using it. Yes, as if there's like not search function. like there's not 280 million people on the site every day that sees that <laughs> right i mean That's like and he was, well he was saying like you know it's theoretically possible that like a handful of people could be in a situation where they see these ads next to you know untoward content but like the the way you secure uh, these marketing, uh, these you know ad arrangements and marketing agreements with these companies is that you ensure that them you ensure them that there's no way that that shit could ever happen. Absolutely yeah. no way. Yeah, and the fact that this is like easily replicatable, replicable. I don't know what happened to my English there. 
uh, like it, it's just insane that he fucking tried to sue these people. It's like a it was a frivolous lawsuit. It was insane that yeah. he even tried to do this. And even the judge himself said he said specifically, and I can quote this: "This suit is quote so unabashedly." and vociferously about one thing that there can be no mistaking that purpose. This case is about punishing the defendants for their speech. And like, it is rare for a judge to kick you in the fucking ass that hard. Oh, it's just, yeah. I just hate this dude, what he's done to the platform. Like it's, it's, it's been a disaster. It's been unfortunate. It's forced. It's, it's fractioned, fractionized, um, the social media space in such a way now that like, you know, tens of millions of people have moved on to other similar platforms, but like it is, it, it has weakened the potential for people to use their voices for good. And just in so many in a, various in a ways. Uni- in a unified way, because, and I think that too was the point. It was like, okay, so you had Mastodon, Don, you had Post, you had Spoutable, Blue Sky and Threads and, and moving, but Twitter on Twitter, we had a unified voice. And so our voices are still strong. And so he has looked for other ways to subvert that by by not just flooding us with trolls, but wanting to remove the block button, wanting to do like these other little things when he realized that, uh, well, he's that, literally on there on the on the fucking app using his platform to boost Nazis. Yeah. I mean, at Nazis. least I mean, Zuckerberg is no motherfucking like no hero to write home about. However, his ass isn't on fucking meta every goddamn five minutes. Replying to trolls, shit. retweeting he, Nazis again. Yeah, I mean, like, he, I keep- he just he just lets them do their shit, but he's not actively engaged in it. No. So for what it's worth, that that is a difference because Elon is there and he comes up in my, in the ads that I get, it's always the same right wing motherfucking ads that I get all the time. And then he shows up in my, and I don't engage with him because I know he's a fucking snowflake and the shit that I would love to say, I'm like, this could be the day I lose my account and I don't want that. So I got to just keep on scrolling by but the shit that he amplifies and the shit that elon says he is he is so goddamn dumb like i i i I don't know if it's the ketamine the the hubris it's probably all of it wrapped in a good combination yeah and his inflated sense of self-importance is just I, uh, he fucking, like, literally, I see red every fucking time. Like, I have to stay away. If somebody posts something, like, I'd like, okay, I'm not going to read this. I don't want to read this because if I read this, this shit's going to, it's just going to, I'm going to reach a boiling point. You know, I'm going to reach a boiling point. Like, I I just, I just can't. Yeah, um, with look, him. we we could just do an entire hour long episode on Elon himself and it wouldn't be long enough. Uh, that to is address true. all the fuckery that he's been engaged in from yes. from his purchase of the platform until now, it just it wouldn't be enough. We, we need like there should be a whole book dedicated to this fiasco. Uh, Carol, do you have um, a nominee for the shithole of the week award by any chance? No, I don't remember. The, we're gonna spin the wheel, right? <laughs> we all, we're gonna have to get the uh, wheel that's wheel funny. of shitholes there we go uh, <laughs> that we're gonna have <laughs> it doesn't I don't want to spin it <laughs> uh, that you put it that way i'm gonna put on my elbow length gloves and and then and, and spin that i was falling asleep and then i heard carol uh well my nominee for the shithole of the week award uh, is the Sun the the British media outlet for spending a couple of months here totally gaslighting the public uh, about the state of affairs with the royal family as it pertains to Kate Middleton? Not that I'm blaming Kate Middleton for anything, but like it was the Sun who put out this narrative that she was enduring an abdominal surgery and it wasn't cancer related. Well, it turns out it was actually fucking cancer related, and then no one was telling the Sun, "Hey." We, we, we need you to solve the mystery. Where's Kate? Like they put out photoshopped images of Kate Middleton on her own. And then when they got busted with that, they blamed, they blamed a cancer patient 
<laughs> they were like saying, well, you know, Kate has a, a Photoshop hobby. Ha ha. And then they put out fake video and f- more fake pictures and, and just gaslight the public. And like, if they're willing to go to this extent to lie to us about something that's so stupid, like there's absolutely no reason to not only like just try and hide this. Like they could have just been like, Hey, can you respect case privacy that they went out of their way to try and lie to people for no fucking reason. when K was going to eventually make this public. They're willing to lie about anything. I mean, it really makes you wonder who's, uh, who's behind them, but not that hard. I have conspiracy theories about that too, that are anyway. Uh, Sure. But they're intimately. I I will second your nomination. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be the, uh, Sonia Sotomayor. I'm going to be the descent. And it's because, so, okay. So I said, and I'll tie this in together after I'm done with this statement. But what I was saying about, you know, Al Jazeera fabricating that story about the IDF raping, uh, raping Palestinian women at the Shifa hospital. And it was up for like 24 hours, millions of meals. Of course, the fucking, you know, article read round the world and then they just kind of quietly dirty deleted and detracted and then you had all of these pro-palestinian people like going back and retracting and deleting like spreading that but then the head of al jazeera just saying like oh you know it was in the heat of the moment like that was his excuse so but for me i mean kate middleton i'm not gonna say fuck her but i'm gonna say like as far as the royal family they really don't have any sway or anything in regards to where we are right now while our democracy hangs in the balance. However, where we are and what is going on in Gaza for Al Jazeera to put something out like that was far more detrimental, harmful, and dangerous for the world as a whole. So maybe we can just tie fucking media (laughs) motherfuckers together. People like the sun, people like Al Jazeera, propagandizing using their platforms to to form and push narratives that have that, that are just that serve no purpose but to fuel fucking whatever and gaslight fucking everybody so i nominate them both all so right Dual it's two to shit. one and then a half two to one and a half shithole al jazeera gets the half shithole no, nope. uh, it's a, it is a dual <laughs> shithole of the week award. Uh, the Sun, Al Jazeera, you are hereby both awarded the shithole mm-hmm. of the week award. I mean, for God's sakes, guys, do better. It's not that fucking difficult to just not outright lie to your audience. Like mistakes get made, that's totally fine. It happens all the time. We're totally understandable. Just, just unless you here. did it on purpose, which I sort of think you did. In which case, fuck you. Yeah, all perfectly said, donut. All right, Carol, closing thoughts, go. All right, so we were talking about, as you know, a lot of people are nervous about what's coming up. Ty started talking about the veiled threats of, you don't need to vote, we don't need your vote, don't worry about it. Like, okay, they're going to push, they're going to push the fear tactics again, trying to get um, voter intimidation up. But it just got me thinking a little bit about like the prisoner's dilemma mentality, like if everyone is going to get it i studied that you're gonna get yourself to the point of getting scared (laughs) that something might overpower you um just remember um we are not in the metaphorical prison uh we are not the prisoners do not let a bunch of prisoners uh convince you to come into prison and face their dilemma this is is not as brilliant as it was going to be in my head but like <laughs> you're not, we're not we on the other will side do that to you carol like, don't let yourself get fucking beat up into this defeatist attitude that is what they want like they want you scared to vote like fuck them man what they don't have a plan their plan is to like hope you'll be scared don't go for it i mean yeah you ain't no prisoner unless unless you're (laughs) listening to this in jail in which case i mean we're all prisoners of the moment i suppose um so as for my closing thoughts uh just really short here just 
recently here the 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 Supreme Court took up this this case uh from from Texas where Texas has basically implemented its its own immigration policy again that is typically the realm of the federal government in that the Supreme Court didn't step in and shut this shit down like Texas doesn't get to set immigration policy that's that's the job of the president well the the administration currently in office and and of the laws on the books uh, those are for the federal government to enforce and and when previously they were faced with the situation where uh, Colorado uh, wanted to remove Trump from the ballot for being an insurrection is one of the arguments that they used uh, in uh, basically rejecting the decision by the Col- Colorado Supreme Court was that they didn't want it to be a patchwork of 50 different laws governing the way, uh, you know, the the placement of candidates on ballots work, even though we're already in a situation where all the states have varying degrees of, of methodology and rules and laws mm-hmm. about how ballots work. Yet in this particular instance, they decide to let Texas do whatever the fuck they want and create a patchwork of 50 different uh, sets of laws when it comes to immigration law. It's just fuck the, the endless fucking hypocrisy on their part uh, when when the constitution it, it matters only when it's convenient to them when when it's clear the constitution bars insurrection insurrectionists from being on the ballot they find a loophole to put an insurrectionist on the ballot cuz it's their insurrectionist uh, when the constitution clearly states and I believe it's the Sixth Amendment that the federal government is largely responsible for the enforcement of immigration policy, well, setting and enforcing immigration policy. Well, now it's okay. It, now with states' rights, this is the time you pick. And like, this is just, a, again, a microcosm of a larger problem in the fact that, like, you can also look at New York here, the appeals court bailing Trump out at the last second, giving him a massive reduction to his bond or at least to appeal the judgment in, in that case, uh, just like that. There's no accountability that, that, that no one, especially as far as the legal system goes, the courts aren't necessarily going to save us and you can't rely on that. Obviously we're, we're hoping that things work out as, as best as possible in Trump's criminal trials. We likely might not, not, we would likely may not see a number of them take place before the election. So just, and even if they do, it's always a possibility that some court higher up, including the Supreme Court, will bail him out. So you can't look to the courts to save us. Again, I know it's exhausting, but just like 2020, it is on us to save ourselves by voting in November. Ty, after you. Us. Okay, so... <sighs> The bridge collapsed in Baltimore today. So, you know, a horrible event. Um, I give shout outs to all the first responders, everyone who showed up and stepped up almost immediately um, after to get as many people off of the bridge as they can. And when I woke up this morning and, you know, when I see all of the news about it and you know, David and I are sitting in, I go, um, how long you think before Republicans turn this into some anti, you know, DEI racist bullshit? Cause that's, you know, what they do. So, you know, I'm reading posts and, you know, those of us resistors, leftists, whatever. Uh, well, just those of us that are human, I'll just leave it at that. And it's, man, this is horrible. Hope everything's, everyone's okay. And oh, what a tragedy. This was painful to watch, blah, blah. And then it's, oh, and then it's conspiracy theories and it's this and it's that. And they have no ability to just be. But what it does do is what that built was, that bridge was built in 1977. And then they're going on about DEI and this and that. And it's like, dude, this, this fucking bridge was built like 40 50 fucking years ago, but what it does amplify and highlight is why infrastructure, I mean, that was a sturdy bridge. That was a 950 foot, you know, cargo boat. So 
no matter how strong that was, that was going to do some damage regardless of how strong the bridge was. But just imagine all the ones that have been like seriously neglected that aren't a, a key point of crossing and transportation on the I-95 corridor that this could happen to that are always being railed against. So every time I see a post from, you know, one of these right wing accounts and they're just like, oh, there needs to be an investment in infrastructure. And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I, Todd, they I not know. <laughs> do they say like, who wants to tell them? Like, I, I it is so incredibly frustrating. I mean, and they seem to forget and they're so and they're like, Oh, Mayor Pete, Mayor Pete, Mayor Pete. Oh, Pete Buttigieg. And I'm like, did y'all motherfuckers forget that a year and a half ago, a whole motherfucking building collapsed in Florida? Because they don't do inspections but every 40 fucking years. People fucking in their beds wake up and literally crush the fucking dead. And then everybody's like, mm, no clamoring for change, no clamoring for infrastructure, no, uh, you know, going on about, Who's going to be here? Who's supposed to be here? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? But it is, it is a, it is a really disappointing and heartbreaking on a level reminder to me that we have crossed that Rubicon of rationality, reality, common sense. At this point, those on the other side don't have the ability to just be, to see something for what it is and to experience, feel, express any kind of, you know, horror or, you know, empathy or compassion or or looking for solutions and, okay, yes, this have things like, this awful as they are that um, can happen, but this should wake you up to like, man, like there's a bridge I cross over when I'm going to the east side from the west side where I live here in El Paso. And when I'm going over the overpass and I'm looking at the way the fucking beams look and I already have vertigo, but I'm looking and that shit just that, 10 seconds, I do, but that 10 seconds when I'm crossing over and I'm like, is this the day? Like, is this the day? Because I know Texas is full of fuckery. You know what I'm saying? And it it just like all of these things. And it was like, we are never going to have nice things. We are never going to get anywhere until people put aside their addiction to rage, their addiction to culture wars that don't exist and are non-existent to address the real issues. And the reason that Republicans are so brazen and confident in their lying and their gaslighting is because they know that and their stupidity. Yeah. Yes. It's because they know that their base would rather be angry, you know, rather, you know, push this bullshit than, see any real solutions because at the end of the day if their problems were solved or they acknowledged that they were being solved that would take away their standing in like and confidence and being able to whine about shit they would actually have to take a step back and look at it would end the existence of all of their grievances exactly That's all they have. (laughs) And that concludes this episode of Part of the Insurrection.